Hey guys, it's Kidomaki here. Today we're going to talk about my theory on the real reason why One for All went back to Deku in the My Hero Academia Heroes Rising movie. Now there are a lot of theories going on on this very same topic or going around on this very same topic and hats off to my boy Wise over at Magnification for his theory on why Deku didn't lose One for All. It's very interesting and I think you guys should really check it out. However, I'm going to go a different route. I believe that it has more to do with the transfer quirk quirk which is the quirk that allows one for all to be transferred to the next user. It's kind of weird to say transfer quirk quirk but I have to say quirk twice so you know exactly what it does or was initially able to do, which was the transfer quirks. Now in my 3 quirks theory video I explained the evolution of the transfer quirk quirk. It evolved into something greater than a quirk that is just able to transfer quirks. With the power of the stockpile quirk, the transfer quirk quirk is now able to transfer one for all in its entirety, inclusive of all the vestiges of prior users. But what if I told you that's not the only change the quirk incurred? What if it gained other means of transferring one for all to another user? Based on what we know or based on what we were told, one for all can only be transferred to another person by that person ingesting the DNA of the current user and that user willing them to have the power. But what if that's no longer the case? What if due to the growth of the transfer quirk quirk, one for all can now be transferred just by being in contact with the person and willing them to have the power? Or maybe this could be a new way to temporarily transfer one for all, but in order to permanently transfer the quirk, you'd need to ingest the user's DNA. This would explain why one for all went back to Deku. You could even say that it never left. It was just shared. I don't know if you guys know the DC character called the Flash, but this is similar to how the Flash shares his speed with non-speedsters. This temporarily gives them the power to run at light speeds and access to the speedsters' other abilities. Now compare that to what happened with Bakugo when Deku held his hand. He was instantly imbued with the power of one for all just because Deku made it so, and that was without any ingestion of DNA. However, the weirdest part of this was the fact that Deku just knew that he could do it without All Might ever telling him that he could. All Might told him that in order to transfer the quirk to another person, the recipient has to ingest the user's DNA. And that's how All Might gave it to Deku. So how did Deku know that he could do it without giving Bakugo his DNA? I believe that he subconsciously knew that he could because One for All told him so. And this supports my theory on One for All having a consciousness. Or you could say it's similar to how Shodan characters just know that they can do certain things when they get a new form, even though no one told them that they could. But storytelling wise, one for all having a consciousness makes more sense. We've also seen it in action before. For example, when Shinzo used his brainwashing quirk on Deku during the sports festival arc. One for all brought Deku out of his brainwashing because it wanted to, not because he asked it to. And I don't know about you, but that sounds to me like something that has a consciousness. And if that's not proof enough, remember when Deku first unlocked the Black Whip and the fifth user came and told him that the reason why he unlocked it is because it was ideal to what he was trying to accomplish. This situation is no different. Deku needed to transfer one for all to Bakugo and they didn't have enough time nor were they in a position to transfer DNA. So being able to transfer one for all to Bakugo without giving him his DNA was ideal for Deku, thus Deku unlocking the ability to do so. Now obviously I'm not saying that whenever Deku needs a quirk he's going to get it, although that would be dope as fuck. What I'm saying is that if one for all has a certain ability that is not being utilized and Deku is in severe need of it, he would more than likely get access to it. Now I might did allude to why Deku got one for all back but as per usual his theory is completely nonsensical. All Might thinks that the reason Deku got one for all back must be because Bakugo fell unconscious before the transfer was completed. I kid you not, this was legit the reason the writers placed in the movie. Which is stupid because I don't remember consciousness as a requirement to transfer in one for all. And I don't remember All Might telling Deku that he has to be awake for a certain period of time in order for the transfer to complete. And I'm pretty sure I don't remember this happening because it didn't. And if the transfer failed because Bakugo was unconscious, why did it go back to Deku? He was also unconscious. Bakugo was also using 100% full cowling, so how was that possible if the transfer wasn't completed? But we should know better, All Might has never been adept in the knowledge of One for All and there's no reason to believe that has changed. Another thing that doesn't make sense is Bakugo not remembering that he got One for All even though he was fully conscious when he received it. This was not explained in the movie but I think that One for All is responsible for this. And yes, this heavily leans on One for All having a consciousness, so bear with me. Maybe one of the users has a memory eraser quirk and One for All used it to wipe Bakugo's mind. I don't know why it would do that but I think it did. Or maybe it's the typical shonen trope of characters forgetting when they've used great power. I don't really know but I guess we'll find out. 
There was also a scene where we saw the last ember of One For All go out. It's like a flame that was extinguished. But I think that was One For All leaving Bakugo, not Deku. But it's still weird that Deku thought that he had lost One For All when it was still inside him. I'm sure that a power as great as One For All still residing in you would be fairly obvious, but what do I know? Well that's it for why I think Deku still has One For All. Currently I'm working on another theory on why I think Deku will temporarily transfer One For All to All Might in the current war arc so that he can have his last smash and die like a hero. I'll be posting that video later this week, so hit subscribe and ring that notification bell to be notified of all my uploads. Furthermore guys, please let me know what you guys thought about this theory by commenting down below. Do you think that it's plausible or do you think that it's utter trash? I don't care man, just, just let me know. I'm, I'm desperate. Anyways guys, the quote of the day is, what I cannot affect, cannot affect me. Always remember that. Thanks for keeping it real. I hope you guys have an awesome day. Peace.